Hi everybody, it's time to fix a really ugly coffee table. Hey, one of my first woodworking projects about 15 years ago was recycling an old locker room bench into a table. But I wound up adding some pine to make it wider, and I also created these legs that don't really match anything at all. We can do better. So three years ago, I designed these butcher block tables all maple, and they turned out pretty awesome. And I think we're going to try to mimic a lot of this design. So I want to stick with the maple tops, and I want to carry the butcher block design to the legs. So I started with a half sheet of three quarter inch birch plywood, four foot by four foot, which gave me 38 strips at one and an eighth inches. And all stacked up, it looks like butcher block in miniature. I really like this. It's bringing a pretty cool and low cost design element that's going to be boho chic. Drawing your eye to the design, the legs and the butcher block table can be a statement piece in the middle of the room. <laughs> Thankfully that glue is pretty safe to work with. But stacked up, each one of these sections has 19 layers at 3 quarters of an inch thick, which gets us to about 14 inches in total height, and that's perfect for the height of our coffee table. So into the design, I really wanted to create an interesting taper on the legs. And so while the coffee table top is 48 inches long, the total length of my leg is going to be 46 inches. So I measured over 11 inches from that first pencil mark, and then adding another three inches at the top, tapered down to an inch and a half, and that's gonna be starting up at the top of your relatively wide, and it creates that nice taper for the overall leg. And I'm gonna create two of these. Now it's pretty easy to make a straight cut by using a straight edge rip template, and there's videos you can find out on YouTube to help you with that, but I've got one that's pre-set up for my circular saw, and when I have to cut the inner angles, I think the jigsaw works best. And now even though I've got a pretty big chunk of waste coming out of the center here, that's going to be great for another project someday, I really like the look of this leg section. And so now try as best you can to stack up that plywood. There's still gonna be some high spots on it. So we'll hit it with some rough grid sandpaper and take it down so we've got a relatively flat finish to work with. Talk about the best laid plans of mice and woodworkers. Uh, sometimes you run into trouble in the wood shop. Um, and I really like the look of this plywood, but this was just home center birch plywood it was three quarters uh, inch thick and it was seven layers, seven ply. And it looked pretty good. In fact, I'm pretty confident that it's going to be strong enough to support the downward weight of the coffee table that we're going to put it on. But when I was sanding it, I bumped into it and I snapped a piece right off. Uh, so I don't think it's that tough uh, side to side. And it didn't break at the glue layer. The glue held. This actually broke off on one of the plies. I'm gonna to try to make this work and stiffen up the whole structure with some epoxy. That should soak in to the wood fibers and put a, a plastic, hard plastic layer on the outside and toughen the whole thing up. Uh, but the intention is to try to fix this <laughs> and make it work. So I made another design choice to put a rounded over edge on these legs with the router. But you don't have to do that. If you like them just squared off as they were, uh, then stick with that design. It's your choice. So just putting a little bit of a round over edge on it and sanding off the burn marks, this was ready for some finished sanding. Now anytime you're working with epoxy, and this was just some inexpensive home center epoxy, this stuff really stinks. And you need to wear rubber gloves, read all the safety instructions when you're working with it. And in this particular case, it's always best to work outdoors. So I laid it on there pretty thick and then smoothed it out. I really wanted the 
wood grain to drink in the epoxy. And yes, I need a haircut. And then we let it dry and Dash, our wonder beagle, uh, is there for quality assurance. And he just preferred I throw it as a stick, but they look really nice just as is without the finished sanding. Now to make it easier to work with, I just cut this table down the center. It made it a little easier to make a second pass and remove that pine. But what I didn't know is that the outer edge of this butcher block table wasn't completely straight. I'm not sure if it had warped, but when I took the edge off and I put the pieces together, there was a crown and it, it would not have glued up really well. So I brought back the straight edge rib template and flipped it over, screwed it to the bottom side of this butcher block table. And yes, we've got to get it back to the saw. <laughs> With that straight edge rib template up against the fence, it allows me to make a nice, clean 90 degree cut. And now when I put those two pieces together, it's nice and flat and ready for glue. And that's right, everybody. Two minutes sanding party. So after the glue was dry, you can also see this old yellow finish that was on this butcher block. And man, that's got to go. We've got to sand all of that off. So we started with some rough sanding and eventually we'll get to the finished sanding. Now, before we do that, instead of just running these legs down the front and back length of the table, I wanted to crisscross them and I could have spent the time to build a jig, but I just centered them and measured them out and made some pencil marks. And I'm gonna cut some cross hatches so that the two pieces notch and fit together. And if you're very careful with a handsaw and you stay inside the pencil marks, you'll make a pretty clean cut in this plywood. Now I've been doing this a while and it takes a little practice, but this is something you can do and just be very careful when you're using the saw. Make sure your blade is straight up and down and you'll get a nice clean notched out cut like this. I've got to do the same thing to the second piece. Now after that cut, I still couldn't get the pieces together so I had to do a little fine tuning with the rasp and then eventually I could get the two pieces together with a little tapping and a little, little pushing. Now to make this joint solid, I also included some epoxy in between the joints and then I taped it up so that the epoxy wouldn't leak out. And now I've got a really solid cross section here. It's as if it's one piece now. And I couldn't wait. So not done with the finished sanding, but I wanted to see what it looked like just stacked up. Now here we go. Get your sanding block. <laughs> All I needed was a turntable and a control panel. All right, we're almost done. So I'm just putting some center line marks on the legs and I'm measuring out some holes so that I can put in these cabinet screws. And these are going to be great to attach the legs to the tabletop. They'll be nice and solid and if I ever need to take it apart, it'll be easy to pull it apart. For that matter, 10 years from now, I could change the leg design and it'll be easy to remove them. And so I didn't show the footage for spraying the polyurethane, but I am really pleased at how this came out. We got the dingy yellow finish off the tabletop and those legs really do look like it's a mini butcher block design. It's quite eye-catching. I think this can be a statement piece in the center 
of any living room. So while my old coffee table needed some big time help, I think you can upcycle or recycle most any wooden tabletop with this plywood leg technique and get yourself something truly boho fabulous. So if you got something ugly sitting in your basement or you find a shabby treasure out at a thrift store, this project is for you. And finally, anytime you're using power tools or chemicals, please read the instructions and stay safe. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this week's video. And as always, if you like our content, we hope you give us a thumbs up, you subscribe to the channel, and if you hit the bell icon, you'll get notified every time we publish something new. Take care.